My name is Jason Fluger. I'm a senior majoring in chemistry and I'm also the president of the Challenge Society, which is an undergraduate chemistry club here at Columbia. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the work that I've been doing for about the past two years in the lab of Professor Scott Snyder, who's an organic chemistry professor here at Columbia. Uh, we are interested in the total synthesis of natural products, specifically uh, natural derivatives of the molecule resveratrol. Uh, resveratrol is found in red wine and it's a potential explanation for the so-called French paradox which describes the observation that despite eating a diet high in fat and cholesterol, the French have a relatively low incidence of heart disease. And indeed, resveratrol, in addition to being a strong antioxidant, shows a wide variety of in vitro and in vivo activity against inflammation, heart disease, aging, and cancer. Uh, specifically, I'm interested in the total synthesis of the derivative hymial A, which is shown here. It uh, is actually not as biologically active as resveratrol and many of the other natural products, uh, but it's very structurally interesting. It poses a unique synthetic challenge uh, for our group. And our strategy is more of a global strategy towards accessing the entire family from a single common intermediate um, through which we believe we can access any derivative of resveratrol, uh, including these five which have already been synthesized by the group, uh, in addition to many others with hopefully several more on the way. The common intermediate itself is, uh, the synthesis of which is shown here, it's actually very easy to make and very high yield. It only requires purification at the last step. Um, and the uh, compound can be made in uh, very pure and very high yields. While this m compound is the official intermediate for the group, uh, I'm going to oxidize it to the ketone and treat this compound as the intermediate for the work uh, that I'm about to tell you about. Um, over the course of the past two years, we've gone through three major approaches towards accessing this natural product. The first involved uh, first cyclizing uh, with this compound called trifluorodimethyldioxirin, abbreviated as DMDO. Uh, followed by, uh, we envision adding this compound in using Grignard reagent, which we can then close the ring using uh, DDQ benzylic oxidation. Uh, this slide just shows the mechanism for uh, our novel uh, cyclization using DMDO, um, which initially presents us with a few problems. The first being that the yield of the reaction is very low. At best, it is 30%. Typically, yields are even lower. Uh, it's a temperamental reaction, so sometimes it just doesn't work at all. In addition, the stereochemistry of these two positions is anti, meaning one is up and one is down, whereas to access the natural product, both of them need to be on the same side, either both up or both down. And so that adds in a two additional steps later on down the line to oxidize and then reduce to get us the right stereochemistry. Um, ultimately, those and several other difficulties led us to uh, look for other routes towards the natural product, as this route got very cumbersome and very low yielding very quickly. Our second approach involved a fairly ambitious double cyclization attempt where we would accomplish uh, making this ether and this seven membered ring uh, at the same time in the same reaction flask. That compound here could be prepared from Grignard addition into this aldehyde, which in turn could be made from a Korjakowski epoxidation zinc iodide opening of our starting intermediate ketone. Uh, ultimately, we were not able to get this double cyclization to proceed. Um, and even though we tried to take a step back and do it more stepwise, we cannot even get the single step seven member cyclization to proceed uh, as it had done in our first approach. And ultimately, um, this route proved unfeasible. Sort of an accidental discovery gave us our inspiration for what became our third major approach, which we worked on this past summer. And that was, while going through the Korjakovsky zinc iodide, we got a fairly major side product, which we initially characterized to be this seven membered compound which at the time we made it, uh, we just thought that we could take that to amplopsin F, which is a natural product that had already been synthesized by the group and so wasn't a priority for us, more just a mental exercise. However, on comparing the natural products, we realized that amplopsin F and uh, my molecule, hymial A, are different only in this oxygen atom in this bridge system. And so our, the question then became, can we add an oxygen into this ring to get us to this compound to then take this to hymial A instead? And our attempt to answer that was the bayer villiger oxidation, which is this reaction here. By oxidizing the alcohol up to the ketone, we could then do what's known as the bayer villiger oxidation to add this oxygen to the ring, either on this side or that side. Um, and luckily, we got uh, a one-to-one -one mix of regio isomers where the oxygen added uh, equally to the desired and the undesired side, which is actually better than we would expect it just from looking at the molecule uh, on paper. Two steps remain to complete the molecule. First was a dival reduction, which went in quantitative yield to get this lactol. 
followed by a Friedel Crafts edition of the remaining Arrow Ring, which gave us uh, a very un unexpected product. The NMR spectrum, which is our major way of characterizing these compounds, only had half the number of peaks that it should have had. Uh, one possible answer to this is that we lost half the molecule, but upon taking a mass using mass spectroscopy, uh, we realized that we had the mass of the desired compound. And so our other explanation is that the molecule is somehow perfectly symmetrical, which can't happen in a desired compound, Jaime LA. Uh, so that led us to go back and reevaluate our intermediates to see where we had mischaracterized something. And it turns out it was in that uh, side product from that first reaction that we had mischaracterized. And what we believe actually happened is that the al aldehyde uh, exists as a fairly significant contribution in the enol tautomer. And just by rotating around this bond, you get this structure, which is perfectly set up for a six electron cyclization, which can then be closed by this arrow ring, giving us this six membered product rather than our seven membered ring that we would expect, which when doing the chemistry that we had done would get us to this perfectly symmetrical product. The bright side of that is that the chemistry worked. We were just doing it on the wrong compound. And so the task then became to get at really any of the intermediates along the way, uh, such that we could use the chemistry that we've already done to get at the natural product. And so where we are right now is to kind of create that missing link between our starting materials and the reactions that'll get us to the product. Using the aldehyde, which we can get from our Korchakovsky zinc iodide reaction, we can oxidize that using the pinnock oxidation to the carboxylic acid. And I'm currently attempting uh, various iodolactonization in similar conditions to generate the desired lactone in a single step from which we can use the chemistry that we've already uh, established, namely the reduction in the friedel crafts addition, to get us at our natural product. And so that's currently where the product is at now and the work that I'm currently doing and hopefully uh, we'll be able to finish uh, in the near future. Uh, this is I'm wrapping up. I'd like to thank the Snyder Group uh, particularly Professor Scott Snyder and Nathan Wright, who is sort of my graduate co-worker on the project, as well as the American Chemical Society Division of Organic Chemistry uh, for a fellowship that sponsored me over the summer, through which uh, my corporate sponsor was Novartis, and of course, the Columbia University Chemistry Department for their constant support and resources um, in my research. Thank you.